WHAS 11, weather first. Well, storms rode through overnight, hitting parts of Kentuckiana especially hard. Check out this drone footage showing the roof ripped off parts of the Black & Decker building in Shelbyville, Kentucky. Plus, this gas station with significant damage. Some of the pumps ripped up from the ground and the sign completely damaged. Hello everyone, I'm Bobby McSwine. Thank you for joining us here at 630. Across the river, we're learning, learning a confirmed tornado ripped through New Albany. The National Weather Service confirming the EF1 tornado earlier today that had peak winds estimated at 105 miles per hour. John Gordon with the National Weather Service said they did have a severe thunderstorm warning out. However, the tornado was a surprise. Uh, for their data and it kind of showed an area of stability where there's not going to be a spin up down to the surface and in two places right here in New Albany, they definitely had more damage, but we did have a severe out. I wish we had a tornado warning out and the thing was not even a half a mile. Weather's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Gordon says this is one of the reasons people need to take severe thunderstorm warnings seriously. Also noting on occasion, severe thunderstorms can cause even more damage than tornadoes. Well, our crews are, were able to tour some of the hardest hit places in New Albany, including an apartment complex almost completely destroyed now. WHAS 11's Connor Steffen with photojournalist Jessica Farley takes us there. Line crews continue to restore power here on Grant Line Road. Much of the area still without power after an EF1 tornado clocking in 105 mile per hour winds hit the area, including right here, Indiana University Southeast Campus, where you can see quite literally the damage, all these trees spread all over campus here. And then if we make our way down Grant Line Road, you can see the storm was about a half a mile in distance, but the distance and the amount of work being done right now to restore and repair damages. It's quite the sight to see. And then we get our way over here to this apartment complex where no one was hurt, but residents definitely shaken up. Storms ripped the roof off this duplex in the carriage house complex. The owners physically okay, neighbors say. You know, I always seen it on TV, but it's totally different when you're actually going through it. What I thought was of my daughter and family, you know, because you don't, next day you, you, you can be gone. Across the street is the hard hit campus of IU Southeast. Again, a situation where immense damage fortunately didn't lead to injury. Buildings can be fixed, trees can be uh, cut down and uh, taken away. So as long as our people are good, then uh, it's a good situation for us. As of now, only about 250 households remain without power. In New Albany, Connor Steffen, WHAS 11 on your side. You're not in the way, you're fine. Meanwhile, Indiana University Southeast still plans to hold commencement ceremonies outside tomorrow at 10 a.m. In an update on Facebook, the university said the damage on your screen is currently being cleared on campus. They say they are still continuing to monitor the weather and will update if there are any changes. Now, we may not be done with the storm, so we're going to head over to meteorologist Christina San Juan for a first check of that forecast. Christina, when is the next time we can expect some storms in our area? Well, Bobby, we actually already have some storms that are pushing into our westernmost viewing area going to continue to push from west to east. So do not let your guard down just yet because we do have a couple more rounds of thunderstorms that are going to push through and could be strong, potentially severe at times like we just saw. It really doesn't take much this time of year to have a quick spin up and do all of the damage that we've been seeing. In addition to that one tornado that touched down in New Albany near the IUS campus and that apartment complex, we have a separate EF1 tornado that touched down at the sporting club at the farm that's also in the same vicinity. This picture from the National Weather Service, specifically John Gordon and his drone, showing you uh, the extensive damage that has been done to the roof there and also to that complex that you're seeing in the background. Now let's take a look at radar right now so you can know what to expect into the next couple of hours. You're seeing it already pushing in here. There is a severe thunderstorm warning just near Bowling Green at this hour that actually has a considerable damage threat on that warning. 
What that means is that wind is likely doing damage right as we speak. Wind around 70 mile per hour and then also ping pong ball sized hail with that storm that's down to the south of Bowling Green. That one should thankfully just barely be missing our viewing area here, but I will show you the strongest parts of this cluster of thunderstorms that we're seeing right now as they push into the French Lake Paoli Mitchell area and putting on a track on it so you know where it gets to your location. It should be near you folks in uh, Crawford uh, here in about 15 minutes or so. 651 Hitchcock, uh, Salem, Indiana at 655. Further on down to the south, we're, we're also seeing some of those reds on the map here. Uh, also just over the Sunfish area. Now I'll be in your uh, vicinity. Of course, this is central time in your vicinity near uh, Hammondville by about 15 minutes from now, 15 minutes to Hardyville as well. But all these storms are going to continue to propagate on out from the west to the east. We will have some brief drying time overnight before more storms push in yet again tomorrow morning and tomorrow night. You're going to want to be on the lookout for these. I'll have much more details here in less than 15 minutes. Bobby. Thank you, Christina. Well, all day you've been sending us your photos of storm damage from across Kentuckyana. A lot of trees down over roadways and possibly some power lines. So please be careful if you are out driving. If you would like to share your photos with us, text them to us at 502-582-7290. We will get through it. This is a point and you go right through it together. Yesterday, we lost a true icon. That was Virginia Moore, teaching us all sign language during one of Governor Andy Bashir's pandemic press conferences. Today, the governor confirmed her passing. Moore, a Louisville native, was a household name during the pandemic, helping to give us daily updates on COVID-19 through sign language to our deaf and hard of hearing audience. Early on, she asked the governor as a public service to be a part of the COVID briefings as he said yes, and he said yes right away. Today, the governor remembered her as the Kentuckian who taught us all the importance of leading with love and inclusion. In a series of tweets, he said Virginia was a rock of stability and grace, saying in part she hoped to bring us all together in our most challenging times. We all miss her greatly. The governor today reiterating a phrase both he and Virginia would say all the time. We will get through this. We'll We'll get through this together. Well, it was a magical morning for Mage and his connections after their Kentucky Derby victory. They welcomed reporters to the back to the barn at Churchill Downs this morning. Our Tyler Griever was there to catch up with them. Yeah, Bobby, any win in the run for the Roses is really special. It is even more special when it's your first victory like for trainer Gustavo Delgado Sr. and his son, assistant trainer Gustavo Delgado Jr. That father-son connection makes this as special as it can get. Their champion and Mage got to wear the winner's attire this morning at their barn. Delgado Sr. finally tasted victory in this third try in the Kentucky Derby. Before coming to America, he was a racing legend in his home country of Venezuela. Delgado Jr. says the two of them dreamed of coming over to win this race, so they were asked what it means to get this done together. Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> you guys would understand the, the, the dynamic of, of them, too. I mean, uh, we, we, we probably saw him, but we, he's my best friend. My dad, okay, he accomplished pretty much everything in, in, in Venezuela. For him, at oh, 60, start over again. For, for me, he's the best example. And can be more proud of him. The Delgado say Mage came out of the race well. If he keeps feeling well, they will run him in the Preakness. But later in sports, Bobby, I'll explain how the family ties extend even beyond the Delgados and what kind of moment this is for their home country of Venezuela. All right, thank you, Tyler.